Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this tutorial, I'm going to be explaining how to lengthen and or shorten a pattern. Now you need to make the adjustments to the length of a pattern in specific locations, and you'll find that most patterns now have lengthen and shorten lines to assist you. You need to make sure that you add or remove the length to these areas so that you're not affecting the design or shape of the garment. For example, if you have a circle skirt and you add two inches or five centimeters to the hem of the circle skirt, you are making a larger circle or circumference at the bottom. Likewise, if you remove that amount, you're changing the design of the garment. So you need to make sure that you adjust them in specific areas that you need for your individual body. And where might those areas be? Well, you could need to adjust the length from the shoulder to the bust point. It could be that you need it in the torso, so from the nape of the neck at the back to the waist. It could be that you need to adjust it between the waist and the hip, or the hip and the hem. Again, if you're creating trousers, you may need to make that adjustment in the thigh area or the calf area, and you need to do it in fitted trousers in the two locations to make sure that the knee stays in the right place, so the shaping of the trousers is correct. The same for a fitted sleeve. You would need to make that adjustment in the bicep and the forearm, so that again, the fitted sleeve is correct, the elbow is in the right place. Now it does depend on what you're making, where you need to make these adjustments, and hopefully your pattern will have helped you out with a few of these areas. A good place to start is to compare your back length to the pattern back length measurement. If you're unsure about how to take your back length measurement, then please watch my how to measure tutorial. Now I'm going to be working with my Copen pattern, which is a free dressmaking pattern for a simple shift dress or top and I'm going to share with you how to lengthen or shorten that pattern. I would always recommend that you create a calico toile or a sample after you have made the adjustments, just so that you can check that you've made them in the correct area. Sometimes only in the calico toile will you see that you actually need to make an adjustment in a different area because the pattern company hasn't provided you with the length measurements for that particular area. So join me at the pattern and I can show you how to make these adjustments. You're going to need to begin by comparing your back length measurement to the back length provided with the pattern. And this will tell you whether you need to amend anything at the lengthen or shorten line. Your back length may be longer or shorter than the back length the pattern was designed for. So I'm going to show you how to shorten the pattern and then lengthen the pattern. The first thing I would like you to do is to cut along one of these lines. It doesn't matter which, but I would recommend that you cut along one of the lines rather than in the middle of them, because that can be a little bit wishy-washy. Now that I've cut along the line, I have a free bottom half and a top half of the pattern. For this example, let's imagine that I want to remove one inch or 2.5 centimetres from the back length. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure up from the line that I cut one inch or 2.5 centimetres. And you can draw this on before you cut the pattern out if you would prefer. And I've drawn mine on with my Sharpie, but you would work with pencil here to make it nice and accurate. Now you're going to take the bottom piece of the pattern and you're going to position this onto the top piece, matching the horizontal line with the line that you've just drawn. Now you're also going to want to make sure that you match either the grain line or if you have a pattern that has a straight centre back or centre front, especially if it's along the fold line, you will match that. And you can tape this in place. Now I work with a bit of sticky tape that you can draw on because otherwise I find it a little bit frustrating to try and draw on this normal sticky tape. Now if you prefer when you are shortening a pattern you can actually just fold the pattern up and you're welcome to do that if you would rather. I've always found that by cutting it I get a nice clean line and I'm happy with the finished result but it's up to you. The next thing we need to do is to blend the side seam, the centre back, and we've lined this one up with the grain line because our centre back is slightly shaped, and connect the dart. 
Now I'm working with the size six pattern here, which is the green line. I'm going to start by working with the dart. Now the dart needs to start from the waist line and connect back up to the apex or point here. Again, I'm working with a Sharpie, but you would use a pencil so that you can rub it out. I'm only using a Sharpie so that it's nice and clear for you to see. So I've connected from the apex back to the waist point of this dart. And you may find that your dart lines are straight with the ruler, they may be slightly curved, so again you would use a French curve, or if you don't have one of those, you would blend nicely with a pencil. Now to blend the seams together will be slightly different depending on the pattern that you're working with. Now you just need to think about what it is that you want to keep. So the waist area is what we want. We know that the waist area is going to fit us in this size pattern. And we wanted to move the waist area up because it was too long in the back length. So you can see there's a slight amount of discrepancy from our top pattern piece underneath at both the centre back and the side. And we're going to ignore that. So we're going to take the ruler, and again I'm working with my Sharpie but you'll be using a pencil, and you're simply going to blend that up. And just blend that off. So we're coming from the bottom pattern piece, blending up the centre back, and the same on the side here. Now depending on the pattern you're working with, you may need to use a curve. If you don't have a French curve, you might have to do a little bit of shading by hand, but you're going to be want to think about what pattern piece is the most important at this new point. What have you changed? Do you want the waist to be the width that it is? If so, we don't want to add those little tiny 16 three millimeters from the top part. We're going to trim those off and trim off the black lines here. So I've gone ahead and trimmed off the little bit of discrepancy on the side and on the back. Now the final thing I generally do to these pattern pieces is to flip them over and to stick down my little flap on the back. I just find that a little bit annoying when I'm actually putting this onto my fabric. But again, that's up to you. And there we have it. This pattern piece is good to go. Once again, you need to make sure that you make the same changes to the other pattern pieces. So, this is going to connect to the front. The front also needs to have the one inch or 2.5 centimeters removed along the length and shorten line. So work your way around the pattern pieces if you have more than just a back and a front, doing the same thing at the same point. And hopefully you'll find that the lengthen and shorten markings are on your pattern for ease. Now I'm going to be sharing with you how to add length to a sleeve pattern. Now this sleeve pattern isn't a fitted sleeve and because it isn't full length, there is only one lengthen and shorten line on the pattern between the bicep and the elbow. However, if you are working with a fitted sleeve, there should be two lengthen and shorten lines, one between the bicep and elbow and one between the elbow and wrist and you would need to measure your arm in the two parts to see where you needed to amend the lengthen and shorten lines. Now I've left a little bit of paper on either side here because we might need that when we're blending the side bits together shortly. So if you're cutting your pattern out and you're expecting to make a change, I would recommend leaving a little bit of paper around it. Now, before we cut along the lengthen and shorten lines, there's one thing I need to do here and that's to extend the grain line. So I'm going to grab my ruler, and again, I'm working with a Sharpie, you're working with a pencil. And I'm going to extend this grain line down and through the lengthen and shorten lines. And you'll see why we need this in a second. So if your grain line doesn't travel through the lengthen and shorten lines, bring it down so that it does. Now we're going to cut along the lengthen and shorten line. It doesn't matter which line we cut along, but we need to be consistent. And I would recommend that you cut along a line rather than in the middle, because that's a little bit of a question mark area. So I've cut along the lengthen and shorten lines, and I have got this area of space in between them. I'm now going to need a bit of scrap paper to be able to put in between the top and the bottom of the sleeve to add the length that I require. Now here's my scrap piece of paper. 
I personally like to draw myself a nice straight line and this is going to be for me to position the top of the sleeve onto. And I'm going to make sure that it sits nice and accurately and I'm going to stick that down with my sellotape. Now once I've stuck the top bit of the sleeve, I'm going to want to continue my grain line through onto the scrap bit of paper. And this is going to give me something to join the bottom bit of the sleeve onto. As I mentioned, with the shortening, you're always gonna be working with the grain line or if you have a straight center back or center front, especially if it's on the fold, you're going to be positioning the pattern piece against that. That is gonna be the line that you'll continue. Then you want to decide how much you're going to add. I'm going to be working with an inch and a half, approximately four centimeters. And you're going to draw another line that distance from the top line. So an inch and a half or four centimeters from the top line just like so, keeping it nice and straight with your ruler. Next, you can take the bottom part of the sleeve and we're going to slot this on. So the cut line of the sleeve needs to hit that horizontal line that we've drawn and the vertical line of the grain line on the sleeve needs to slot back up so that the grain line continues all the way through. And again, you can stick that on. Once you've added the amount that you need, we need to blend the two seams at both sides. Now I'm going to be blending from the underarm of the sleeve or the bicep down to the elbow, which is a notch and as marked as the elbow on my pattern. Now you'll find when you connect this that you lose some from one of the pattern pieces and gain some from on the other just like so. And because you've lost a little bit on one and gained a little bit on other, it will even out because we've simply changed the shape of the sleeve slightly by adding in that length. And you'll do the same on the other side, from the elbow line to the top. Now, once you're happy with the blending that you've done on both sides, you can cut that away. So I've trimmed off the lines that I've drawn on both of the sides and the extra paper that I had left from underneath. I also personally like to stick down the piece of paper at the back because I find it a little bit easier and neater when I'm putting my pattern onto my fabric. And there you have it, that is your lengthened pattern piece. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you now understand how to adjust the length of a pattern. I wish you all the best with your sewing. Thank you for watching.